Hey everyone, welcome back to Apollo Art Analysis. This episode we'll be studying a piece by the career multidisciplinary artist known as Will Toulon. This episode we'll be talking about realistic texture, we're going to talk about the impact of scale, and we're also going to talk about the evolution of pagodic architecture. So let's jump right into it. So whenever you first see this work, you know, you met with this immense grand scale of the scene before us here. Viewers likely feeling this sense of awe due to the sheer ornate nature of the work at hand, right? And so in the context of form, you'll notice, of course, the very winding roots kind of place themselves in contrast to very rigid pagoda right but there's no doubt that the composition catches the eye instantly so the context of color you know the scheme we see here is mainly this red and this blue kind of an analogous well kind of a complementary scheme of course you have a bit of green as well so green blue and then of course red but there's really no doubt that red is the most striking element within the work at hand you know blue is a lot more muted that green is a lot more muted the red just pops out instantly and of course a high attention color such as red is always going to do that right and so in the realm of texture we see this incredible diversity right you have of course like we said the very rigid pagoda you have that kind of warm wood texture then we go down here to the clouds a lot more light and wispy then we go say the rigid roots all the way to the more delicate light flowers there all in all these give an incredible sense of realism it kind of immerses us within the scene at hand right it does that absolutely brilliantly and so what you'll notice here, you know, we see this kind of triangular order to the composition, right? It's not top heavy by any means. It feels very balanced. It feels ordered and it feels harmonious as well. That's also going to be conveying a bit of that kind of divine display, right? You're really not going to miss it. And so what you'll notice, of course, the title of this work is Fu Ji, Fu slash Ji. And far within the composition, we see, you know, a mountain or even a cloud reminiscent of Mount Fuji. And it kind of peaks the composition, right? You're just not going to miss it. I'm going to bring in a picture of Mount Fuji. See what we can learn here real quick. All right, so about a reference of Mount Fuji here, there's really no doubt that Fuji is one of the most iconic elements of Japanese culture, right? It is the largest kind of volcanic mountain that they have there. Of course, we have the cherry blossoms over that as well. It's incredibly iconic. It's really been immortalized in everything from poetry to paint, print, and beyond. You know, so many different mediums that it's truly expressed to. So even in the AI generative art world, we're also seeing Mount Fuji as well. There's really no doubt that it's incredibly iconic and it inspired so many different things such as, you know, the these Zen Buddhist paintings, you have that sense of kind of scale and juxtaposition. We'll go a bit deeper into that here in a second. But there's really no doubt that Mount Fuji is one of the most iconic symbols of the Far East and, of course, Japan specifically. But like I said earlier, this grand scale, you're just not going to miss it, right? It dwarfs us instantly. It's one of the most definitive elements of the work at hand, right? This impact is very reminiscent of the kind of Zen Buddhist paintings. We're going to take a quick look at that and see what we can learn as well. All right, so I've got a reference here, you know, reminiscent of watercolor, of course, the ink brush in so many different ways. What I want y'all to pay attention to is this kind of sense of scale, right? You have, of course, you have civilization and you have nature just dwarfing that as well, right? There is this sense of, of course, this incredible use of negative space to just dwarf the viewer. You can tie that back to a lot of yin and yang, this kind of Buddhism, this idea that the empty space is just as important as the filled space. So we certainly see that here as well, right? And this is actually inspired a lot by those kind of early ink brush or Zen Buddhist paintings as well. It's always important to look back at that. All right, so your eye is likely going to be drawn to this pagoda here. It's one of the most central elements of the work at hand, right? And the pagoda actually found its origins in the ancient India stupa. Let's bring this up here real quick. So, for example, on the left here, of course, you have the pagoda, very ancient, of course, absolutely iconic, one of the most popular symbols of Asia, of course, the Far East. But what it actually originated from was the ancient India stupa. So you can see, of course, the contributions over literal centuries to create the scene that we have before us here. So architecture, of course, follows that incredible amount of evolution. And, of course, stupa is a sacred space. And even today, the pagoda is most commonly used in a kind of temple or a sacred setting as well. So we kind of see that here. We're talking about this divine displays or that harmonious, that kind of sacred scene before us here. So the pagoda does that absolutely brilliantly. We always love to look at those insights. And so after a short time with this work, you'll likely notice this kind of small figure who appears to be practicing under this large scene, right? It does appear as a samurai, so of course the kind of origins in the Amishi horseback warriors that eventually became the bodyguards for the highest daimyo elite. So we absolutely love to see that. It appears to be a samurai holding a katana. It's kind of hard to say for sure, but that's truly the vibe that I get here, right? Like the pagoda, 
the samurai is one of the most iconic symbols of Asia and the Far East as well, right? And so, you know, we look at a setting like this, it's hard to imagine what it'd be like to stand before this. Like I said, it feels like a divine de destination or a sacred scene in so many different ways. So, you know, I do practice a bit of martial arts and knife and blade fighting. So, you know, it, it would be a dream to practice under something like this, right? Especially this brilliant nature and, of course, that amazing pagoda. So, truly hope y'all enjoyed today. There's no doubt that this is a very sacred scene, like I said. And so this is an AI generative art piece, so it was made in an AI generative art program. That's going to be Midjourney. Midjourney is incredibly powerful nowadays. It really is nothing to balk at, right? Uh, everyone from new users all the way to very experienced and career AI generative artists are using the program Midjourney. So if you haven't checked it out, I'd certainly suggest it. You know, it truly is worth your time. Really hope you all enjoyed today. We talked about so many different things. You know, the evolution of the pagoda, this kind of imagined setting, the sense of scale, everything from Mount Fuji to the triangular order, texture, you know, color schemes, so many different things we truly hit on today. I hope y'all enjoyed. If y'all did, go check out the original artist, Will Toulon, doing some amazing stuff in the AI generative realm, as well as the 3D art world. So a multidisciplinary artist at this point. So I truly hope y'all enjoyed. My name is Apollo. This was Apollo Art Analysis, and I'll see y'all on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to support our work directly, please check out our Apollo community tokens. Apollo Art Exchange is an ecosystem of art appreciation which elevates artists each and every day. Thanks for listening.